All right. I'm really excited to talk about this paper, a recent paper from 2022 in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology entitled Micronutrient Supplementation to Reduce Cardiovascular Risk. Now, the reason I'm excited is because most of the time, uh, pharma-funded journals, pharma-funded commercials, pharma-funded textbooks will say that nutrition doesn't play a role in X disease, whether we're talking about a recent viral infection or we're talking about Crohn's disease or whatever your ailment is, there's, there's this mantra that, oh, vitamins are useless, nutrition's useless. And of course, any, you know, human with a half functioning brain knows that nutrition impacts your state of health or disease because we've all experienced a time when we maybe had food poisoning or ate something that didn't agree with us. But uh, the, the healthcare system dogmatically says, yeah, it's not really, you know, vitamin A is not going to help you. Vitamin D is not going to help you. Vitamin C is not going to help you against a virus or I've had patients with Crohn's disease who went to their gastroenterologist and the gastroenterologist literally told them it doesn't matter what you eat because nutrition has nothing to do with your disease process. And I think that should be considered medical malpractice and that person should lose their license because it's just idiotic to say something like that. And so when we see papers that are huge studies looking at nutrients and how they impact risk of the number one killer in the world, cardiovascular disease, and they show that they reduce that risk, that's a paper that should be trumpeted from the rooftops. And of course, it's not uh, from mainstream media outlets because there's no money to be made in, in naturally occurring micronutrients that you could get from whole food or that you could purchase relatively inexpensively from a supplement when they could get you on a drug forever that isn't going to help you keep you in the sick care system. So I'll trumpet it and we'll help who we can help with it. But I want you to see this because again, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer. Although it's quickly losing ground, I saw an article today that claimed that Alzheimer's disease is now the number one killer. Uh, but cardiovascular disease through time immemorial has been number one and cancer and Alzheimer's, I guess, are nipping at its heels, as is uh, the mainstream healthcare system. They're consistently the number three killer each year in the United States from properly prescribed medical procedures. So stay out of the hospitals if you can help it. So what do we do? What nutrients can reduce our risk of cardiovascular disease? And this, as you'll see, includes heart attack, includes stroke, includes um, various cardiovascular um, issues like hypertension or high blood pressure. So let's dive in here. And what I really like about the study is it's not only giving us the information, but it's actually giving us dosages that they used. So you're going to leave this uh, webinar with actionable dosing. Okay. Like I can't, as your doctor, give you a dose. And so this is all information purposes only. Um, but you, you can, you can type the, the, uh, title of this study into your search browser and pull it up and you have these, these doses that uh, the study reports were useful in reducing risk. And how useful are these doses? Well, if you go by sheer numbers, they're pretty useful because A, this study looked at almost 900 different randomized controlled intervention trials. So the first thing to know from that is that is a randomized controlled intervention trial is the best research you could do um, in the current research model to, to evaluate an intervention in a human. So like this randomized controlled intervention trials, we're, doing, we're, we're implementing an intervention in a human, not in a mouse, not in a Petri dish, but in a real living human. It's controlled, so we know there's a control group and there's an intervention group, meaning there's a group that got nothing and we just followed them as, hey, these are everyday people. And then there's groups that actually receive the intervention or the thing that we're studying. And it's randomized so that the study participants and the researchers, neither of them know who's getting the real thing and who's getting placebo. So that way there's no bias there or no placebo effect there, or you're, you're, you're reducing the placebo effect. Um, or not the placebo effect, that's going to be there. You're reducing the uh, the benefit you get when you 
yeah, it's placebo effect. You, you think you're taking the, the, the uh, real thing. So 800, almost 900 randomized controlled tr intervention trials were studied that included almost 900,000 people. Okay, so statistically very strong numbers. And those 900,000 people accounted for almost 5 million person years. <laughs> so these, this study is robust uh, statistically for us. And what they said was, what they found in general was that supplementation with omega-3 fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids, arginine, citrulline, which are amino acids, folic acid, or, or better form would be folate, vitamin D, magnesium, zinc, alpha lipoic acid, CoQ10, melatonin, catechins, which you can find in, say, green tea, curcumin, flavanols, genistein, quercetin, all these things are found in whole food plants. All of those things I just listed showed moderate to high quality evidence for reducing cardiovascular risk factors, cardiovascular disease risk factors. So that's big time, okay? The, the people who trumpet, oh, nutrition doesn't matter, vitamins can't help you, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, show me your studies because this is a massive study showing that there's moderate to high quality evidence for many nutrients that we could be taking to reduce our risk. Specifically, omega-3 fatty acids, so your fish oil, your flax seeds, your chia seeds, um, omega-3s decreased cardiovascular disease death they decreased heart attack. Okay, so they decreased your risk of death by 7%. They decreased your risk of heart attack by 15%. And they decreased coronary heart disease events by 14%. So should we take omega-3 fatty acids if we're concerned for cardiovascular disease risk? Absolutely. Folic acid, okay, or folate, vitamin B9. That decreased stroke risk by 16%. Coenzyme Q10 decreased death from any cause by 32%. Okay, so these nutrients are very important, and we've talked about them individually in different videos, but today we're going to talk about them in a group in this study. So that's the general information, and they cherry-picked of all the nutrients that were best for cardiovascular risk reduction. If you could only pick a couple, it was omega-3s, folate, CoQ10 as the three you should take, okay, if you had to pick. Um, and if you're on a statin drug, remember we've said many times statin drugs drive CoQ10 deficiency, so uh, you need CoQ10 more than the average person. So let's dive in and get more granular regarding uh, the specific nutrients. But before we go there, I want to show you the first paragraph of this study because, again, it's, it's, it's big time. So if we look here, all right, a large portion of cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes related death or disability is attributed to suboptimal dietary practices. Attributed to what? Poor nutrition. Okay, that's not rocket science, but if you talk to certain doctors, it would be. Okay, but even more important is right here. Lifestyle medicine, or we could call it, we could say functional medicine in this group, right, is based on chronic behavior excuse me, lifestyle medicine based on chronic behavior patterns has been shown to be a powerful preventive care modality with good nutrition as a critical foundation. So what you hear from the media is, oh, your lifestyle doesn't matter, take this medication, nutrition doesn't matter, it's genetic, not true, not true. Lifestyle does matter big time. And, and the more chronic the issue, the more lifestyle matters. Okay, so functional medicine, is 21st century healthcare, as I've said many times, and here's the American Journal of Cardiology saying it in not so many words. All right, so that's big. Then if we look over here at this next blue paragraph, huge again, functional medicine. Quote, to personalize cardiometabolic preventive and therapeutic dietary practices, it is critically important to have a comprehensive and in-depth understanding of the balance of benefits and risks associated with micronutrients in diverse dietary patterns, okay? So A, this suggests that we should personalize care to people. Oh, that sounds like functional medicine, it's individualized and specific. Yes, we should. And to do it the best, we should understand benefits and risks of nutrition. Ooh, that's a bummer. Conventional medical doctors learn none of that. So they're not set up 
to create a personalized heart protective plan for you. What's their plan consist of? Statin drug, blood pressure medication, right? Maybe a blood sugar medication, depending on what's going on. So they're going to give you three meds, which do nothing to make you healthier. All right. To be healthy and to create a personalized plan, you have to have a doctor that A, practices functional medicine and believes personalized care matters, and B, has to have been taught nutrition <laughs> or basically had to go learn nutrition because mainstream school doesn't teach it regardless of if it's medical doctor, chiropractor, et cetera. So we need to be individualized and specific. That's what the American Journal of Cardiology is saying here. So when we do that, we want to be individualized and specific with certain nutrients. And so the first ones we'll look at here is what micronutrients when supplemented impacted blood pressure the best. Okay. Seven different ones had a good impact on blood pressure. And those are here. You can see it. Arginine citrulline, folate, magnesium, alpha-lipoic acid, genistein, and resveratrol, all lowered blood pressure. Okay, cool. Well, doc, you said you'd give us doses. I didn't give you, I'm not giving you any doses. The study is though, in this study, the average dose of arginine was six grams a day. Of citrulline, six grams a day. Of folate, five milligrams. Of magnesium, 400 milligrams. Alpha-lipoic acid, 600 milligrams and on and on. Resveratrol, 390 milligrams. Genistein, 54 milligrams a day. So here we are with um, nutrients that have been shown to lower blood pressure naturally. Okay, you're not on a blood pressure lowering medication. These blood pressure meds are shown to lower both systolic, which is the top number, and diastolic levels. So here's your natural hypertension medications, one or more of these things, okay? And again, to know what you should do, personalized and specific to you, you need to work with a doctor who can figure that out by testing and evaluation. So that's for blood pressure. What if we look at cholesterol? Okay, what effect do micronutrients have on cholesterol? Do any of them have an effect? Yes, seven different nutrients had a role on multiple blood cholesterol parameters. Anthocyanins, so an antioxidants. Folate again, omega-6 fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids, genistein, magnesium, zinc, okay? And again, we can go for dosing the anthocyanins, uh, 1.4 milligrams up to one gram a day was the range there, okay? That would improve LDL and triglycerides and H or total cholesterol, HDL and triglycerides. Folic acid, five milligrams a day, improved LDL, total cholesterol and triglycerides. Um, omega-6 fatty acids, 4.2 grams a day, LDL, total cholesterol, HDL. So you can, you can go through these if you <clears throat> download the paper and see the, the dose, and I won't read every dose of everything to you, but there's nutrients to reduce cholesterol without the statin drug. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll say it again, because we've said it many times. The statin drug commercials in the fine print say it, and, and they don't even say it verbally anymore that I've noticed recently, but it says after six months of intensive nutritional and dietary change, if that hasn't worked, consider a statin. But what do they do? They see one bad blood test and want to get you on on day one. So try the lifestyle stuff first. Are there nutrients that can help blood sugar? Absolutely. There were eight. So for blood sugar, curcumin, zinc, arginine, folate, vitamin D, catechins, flavanols, genistein. All right. Hemoglobin A1C is the average blood sugar over the last 90 days. It's, it's a blood test you can run. All right. Curcumin reduced your A1C half a percentage. Um, it reduced your fasting blood sugar. Your zinc, zinc reduced A1C half, half a percentage point, okay? Uh, arginine decreased blood sugar. Folate decreased blood sugar. So as we said, vitamin D decreased A1C a tenth. So these things individually can impact your blood sugar and in combination likely will impact it greater than individually. And again, 
we'll talk about this later in the paper, but research papers have to study at some, on some level, they're studying things individually or in group, smaller groups than you see in whole food and you see in nature. And that's just part of how research is done right now. But, you know, eating these things as whole foods in combination likely to have greater positive impact than an individual nutrient by itself, because you, in nature, you rarely find the nutrients by themselves. <clears throat> How about polyphenol supplementation with, with different cardiometabolic profiles? Here's an interesting one. What if you're a healthy person and you don't have heart disease stuff? Good question. For apparently healthy individuals, a median dose of 146 milligrams per day of polyphenols improved blood lipids blood and blood sugar. So even healthy people could use some supplementation there or benefit from it. For people with pre-type 2 diabetes or type 2 diabetes, so with pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes, a median dose of 262, call it, milligrams a day of polyphenols improved the blood sugar. So that's in pre-diabetics and type 2 diabetics. Let's get through these charts here. For patients with cholesterol issues, a median dose of 130 milligrams a day of polyphenols reduce the cholesterol numbers. Uh, for patients with high blood pressure, median dose of 350 milligrams a day, decreased blood pressure, um, both the top and bottom number. Okay, great to see. Now let's get to, how about micronutrient supplementation on the clinical events for either cardiovascular disease or type two diabetes? All right, so supplementation with coenzyme Q10 at a dose of 50 milligrams per day reduced all-cause mortality. We talked about that earlier at the top. So just 50 milligrams per day reduced all-cause mortality up to 32%. That is huge, okay, huge, huge, huge. And why? Well, remember, we need CoQ10 for our mitochondria to produce energy. We need energy to do anything, including heal. So if we don't have enough CoQ10 and we have mitochondrial dysfunction, mitochondrial dysfunction is at the root of uh, many chronic diseases. So making sure we have the nutrients needed for that, for the mitochondria to do their job is key to health and preventing death. A median dose of 1.8 grams per day of omega-3s reduced risk of cardiovascular death, heart attack, and coronary heart disease, like we said earlier. So we set it at the top of the page, but this part gives us the dose. Median dose of 1.8 grams per day, ranging from a quarter of a gram, which is not enough, to up to five and a half grams per day. Um, so, you know, this is saying, call it two grams per day, reduce risk on average for people of cardiovascular disease. Excellent. So a comprehensive evidence-based map, what they're talking about here is they took all the information from the nutrients I just read to you and said, okay, you know, these, these uh, omega-6 fatty acids lowered total cholesterol, say. Um, uh, folate lowered blood pressure, top number, blood pressure bottom number, total cholesterol and LDL, also triglycerides, also fasting blood sugar and fasting insulin. So that's how you would read it if you download this and go through all these. Um, so there it is in a pictorial form of how each of the nutrients impact each of the parameters they're measuring. It's really, really cool. And so if we, if we wrap it up here, um, they're talking about their map and how they laid it out. And again, like I said at the top, if you had to only pick three nutrients, the three best for reducing cardiovascular event risk, so heart attack, death from cardiovascular disease or stroke, were omega-3 fatty acids, folic acid or folate, and coenzyme Q10. And I like here in the purple, they say in the discussion, an optimal nutritional strategy to promote cardiometabolic health will likely involve personalized combinations of, the, of these nutrients. So again, to, get, to have your best you, to live a life at optimal, to have the lowest cardiovascular disease risk, we need to personalize it to you. And so that's where giving you you know, doses here, this is just like, 
This is better than Googling because at least there's research behind, well, here's a dose to take. But again, you, you weren't studied in this study. All of your variables are not incorporated here. So this gets you, you know, better than you were before you saw this video. But if you really want the best plan, it needs to be personalized to you. And to personalize it, we need to know you, test you, evaluate you, and uh, dial it in that way. So I hope this was as exciting for you as it was for me. I love to see research, especially strong research with large numbers behind it that support what we already know intuitively is that, hey, we should get good vitamins, minerals, fatty acids, uh, antioxidants, et cetera. But it's helpful to see it printed in the research. So when doctors say idiotic things like nutrition doesn't matter, you can hold this up and say, well, here, you're behind on your reading and give that to them. And then also this can help support the decisions you make in terms of dosing and 